it can be so debilitating when you struggle with self comparison. Whether you're comparing yourself to other people in the gym or to your previous self, it can be really hard and really impact not only your mental health but also your progress in CrossFit. We all have completely different lives and different things going on that affect the amount of work that we can put into our training. We might get a new job, we'll get a promotion and that'll impact the amount of time that we can train. You might end up having a family which is amazing but it also takes up a lot of time and you might struggle to have any alone time, never mind being able to go to the gym. You might, like me, struggle with mental health for periods of time which set you back in your performance. Moments in your life where it's hard to just get out of bed and just do your normal job. Never mind go to a gym and progress in the sport that you enjoy. One thing that we've got to accept is that fitness will probably fluctuate throughout our lives. Even if we can stay consistent for the next 10 years and our lives don't change much, we're gonna get older and that can have an impact on performance. Yes, some people can be a total badass, still train and lift heavy and continue to progress, but for a lot of us, things will change. I think a lot of us expect to constantly get better at this sport. That, frankly, is not realistic forever. We can't get better forever. And that's even more reason why we can't compare ourselves to others, because say I start comparing myself to somebody else online, they might be in their early 20s and I'm 30 and I have quite a full-on full-time job. I have commitments in my life. I've got a dog that has quite a lot of energy and is quite demanding. I might have a family in the future. I, I can't compare myself to say a 23 year old that has all of their time to dedicate to fitness, maybe has a job in the fitness industry and has none of those things going on. I've just settled into doing what I can and looking after myself and trying to do what's best for me. I try and focus on myself and what I can do right now and how I can help myself do my very best, whatever that looks like at the moment. So last week I got the virus and I've been quite ill. I really struggled for a few days. I also struggled with my eating disorder. I, I struggled to eat at all, frankly. That has massively impacted my performance. My lungs aren't feeling great, so that is gonna massively impact my performance. There's a few setbacks there and I've also struggled with my mental health after being a little bit ill. At the moment, I'm in the process of building my fitness and my my capacity for fitness back up again and I'm trying to really look after myself this weekend because I need it. I am frankly absolutely exhausted at the moment <laughs> and today I'm thinking about doing a workout that fits within how I'm feeling right now. So to look after myself, I spent the morning just cuddling up with the dog, trying to find a bit of peace, trying to make myself feel a little bit better, a little bit calmer. I'm just about to have lunch, and as I've struggled with my eating disorder over the last couple of weeks, I am really trying to eat consistently. I'm now at the point where I'm actually eating enough again, and I'm really proud of myself for that. So I need to do that first, and then I'm gonna head to the gym and do a little bit of training that fits with how I'm currently feeling. I'm so lucky at the moment that I'm sponsored by a meal prep company called Prep Kitchen. This is something that really helped me when I was struggling with my ED. I just had to eat the pre-prepped meals and that honestly got me back into eating properly again. It's another reason you can't compare yourself to other people because some people are only cooking for one. Some people don't have to cook at all because they have meal prep. Some people are cooking for a family of four or even bigger and others have a really small budget some people have a bigger budget and can afford to buy high protein, high quality meats, use really fresh ingredients. I scrolled back through my Instagram today to find some old videos for an Instagram reel. This is always a bit of a gamble for me because of course I was bombarded by photos and videos of my body when I was smaller more lean and when I had visible abs. I'm not gonna lie, it is really hard. But I have to remind myself that I was younger, that that is a 26 year old's body and I am 30 now. So of course it has changed, body's changed. My life has changed a lot. I've been through a lot and I'm proud of my body for getting me through it. I wouldn't want to go back to where I was, struggling as badly as I was just to be in a thinner body. I used to be able to do muscle ups and other gymnastics and it was a lot easier when I was 20 kilos lighter. But I will get back there. I will be able to do those gymnastics movements again. This time it will be without the restrictive eating that I used to get there last time and I'll be stronger and my technique will be better. And even if that didn't happen, I am worth so much more than my athletic performance.
performance. I am worth so much more than whether or not I can do a muscle up. It's also the first day of my cycle today. My recovery is really low. My respiratory rate is up a little bit, which is probably just from having the virus last week. I'm going to train at home today and I'm just going to do like a bit of an e I think. I'm just going to set up a few different stations and just gently do some work on each station. I know it will help me feel better. I've got stomach cramps. Actually doing a little bit of core work does seem to help that sometimes because it's usually in my back and it seems to take a little bit of tension off my back. So I've got an ab bench which I think I'll use. I might add in some gymnastics work because I'm trying to improve my gymnastics and the air bike for a little bit of cardio but I'm not going to push too hard. Some days, especially when you're a female, you've got to realise that you can't go super hard in the gym every single day. There are going to be some days in the month where you feel really exhausted and drained and you just need to prioritise looking after yourself and today is one of those days for me. Let's see what we can do. So in the workout I did 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off on each movement. I use bands for pull-ups sometimes because I can do a few strict without bands but for me it makes more sense to do more reps with a band than to do less reps without. More reps can help you build more muscle with better form whereas when I'm doing less reps completely strict with no band I find I'll like grind out the last couple of reps and it will be really trap dominant and that's not particularly good for me because I'm already quite trap dominant. It also helps with self comparison because I used to be able to do 10 strict pull ups in a row and sometimes I do feel a bit down on myself when I can't do what I used to be able to do. So the reason why self comparison can actually make you worse at CrossFit is because when you start comparing yourself to other people in the gym, people do cut reps and they shorten the range of motion as well in a movement. Say they'll go less deep in a squat or they'll let themselves off that no rep where their chin didn't go over the bar and a pull up. There are so many ways to do a movement faster but that is not necessarily good training for you. It is not helpful to be cutting reps short and often people will also scale the weight down so that they can finish the workout faster and that obviously works their ability to go fast, cardiovascular fitness, but that won't get them stronger. If you keep scaling down in order to win the workout, you're not not going to get better. For the last few years I have been pretty much last in every single CrossFit class that I've done and the reason for that is because I refuse to scale down to keep up with other people. I will not drop my weights below the RX weight because the RX weight is what I can do. I'm perfectly capable of moving a 15 kilo dumbbell. I had to let go of wanting to win and focus on my form and my technique, doing the movement properly. You just have to ignore everybody else in the room especially if they're trying to race you which I experience a fair amount, especially having a platform on the internet. People do try and beat you and I'm honestly okay with that. It really doesn't matter to me. Everybody has different strengths and weaknesses. And if you're trying to beat me on burpees, of course you're gonna beat me on burpees. <laughs> like I'm 100 kilos, I'm very heavy and burpees are very hard for me, as are any other body weight movement. What I'm not gonna do is scale the weight down that I'm using in order to keep up with people because I recognize that there are always people better than you there are always people worse than you it doesn't mean winning or losing it means not comparing myself some people think self-comparison is helpful and helps them strive to do better comparing yourself to other people's performance is actually really demotivating and doesn't help you progress maybe for some people it is true and if that is how you operate then that is totally okay and you can do whatever you want but if it is affecting you maybe it's time to reanalyze that there's a really good video on comparison based self-esteem which I will link in the description below. If your reference point for self-esteem is based off of, of people not being as good or as fit or as strong as you, if that's your only source of self-esteem, unless you're Tia Toomey or Matt Fraser, there will always be someone that's better than you. It doesn't matter if other people can do it better. We still deserve to be proud of ourselves because we've put in some hard work. <sighs> That was, <laughs> that was really good fun. I set out to do 30 minutes, but I ended up only doing 20 minutes because really knackered and not massively feeling it today. It's bound to happen with my low recovery and not great sleep, so. It's nice that it's actually getting a bit sunny in the UK now. <laughs> I know some people will say like, drop your excuses, they don't help anyone. When you analyze your life and find the reasons why your performance isn't the best it can possibly be ever. Some people will say that you're pitying yourself and you should snap out of it, but they're actually wrong. Self-compassion actually decreases self-pity and complacency. <laughs> it doesn't make you soft. <laughs> when you say, I've made a mistake and everybody else makes mistakes, you also say, so I might as well try again. 
I'm just gonna try my best next time. You can say I've done the best that I had on the day, but in the future I'm gonna do this, this and this to improve my performance. You acknowledge the reasons why your performance isn't where you want it to be and you find the areas where you can improve so you can improve in the future. Whereas when you compare yourself to others or to your previous self, it can create the shame. So you're like, I made a mistake, I'm worse than everybody else, I'm an awful person, I'm a failure. Purely because you're comparing yourself to other people and that is not true. You are not a failure no matter how badly you think you've done. It was just a backward step or it was just a result that you didn't expect. Now you can implement the things that you know will help you progress in the future. Self-compassion actually stops that shame and the way that we beat ourselves up when we feel like we aren't good enough. When you stop comparing yourselves to others and to your previous self, you realise that the effort that you're giving right now is totally okay and you're balancing everything in your life the best way you can. We can't be good at everything all at once and maybe you've invested your time or your energy into something else in your life right now and that is totally okay. So it's just not good for us to compare ourselves, whether that's to our previous fitter self or to someone we know, and we deserve so much better than that. Instead, we can just focus on what we can do and brick by brick improve our fitness and keep reminding ourselves along the way that comparison does not help. It's unsurprising really that so many of us struggle with self-comparison because we are fed so many images of fitness influencers making us feel like our body isn't enough, that we can't wear the shorts that we want to wear in the gym. If you feel like you can't wear the shorts then please do go and watch this video I'm, I'm hoping that I'll help you feel a little bit more confident I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one bye